bending is a metal forming process in which a force is applied to a piece of sheet metal, causing it to bend at an angle and form the desired shape. A bending operation causes deformation along one axis, but a sequence of several different operations can be performed to create a complex part. The act of bending results in both tension and compression in the sheet metal. The outside portion of the sheet will undergo tension and stretch to a greater length, while the inside portion experiences compression and shortens. The neutral axis is the boundary line inside the sheet metal, along which no tension or compression forces are present. As a result, the length of this axis remains constant. The changes in length to the outside and inside surfaces can be related to the original flat length by two parameters, the bend allowance and bend deduction, which are defined below. When bending a piece of sheet metal, the residual stresses in the material will cause the sheet to spring back slightly after the bending operation. Due to this elastic recovery, it is necessary to overbend the sheet a precise amount to achieve the desired bend radius and bend angle. The final bend radius will be greater than initially formed and the final bend angle will be smaller. The ratio of the final bend angle to the initial bend angle is defined as the spring back factor. Kansas. The amount of spring back depends upon several factors, including the material, bending operation, and the initial bend angle and bend radius. Bending is typically performed on a machine called a press brake, which can be manually or automatically operated. For this reason, the bending process is sometimes referred to as press brake forming. Press brakes are available in a range of sizes, commonly 20-200 tons, in order to best suit the given application. A press brake contains an upper tool called the punch and a lower tool called the die, between which the sheet metal is located. The sheet is carefully positioned over the die and held in place by the back gauge while the punch lowers and forces the sheet to bend. In an automatic machine, the punch is forced into the sheet under the power of a hydraulic ram. The bend angle achieved is determined by the depth to which the punch forces the sheet into the die. This depth is precisely controlled to achieve the desired bend. Standard tooling is often used for the punch and die allowing a low initial cost and suitability for a low volume production. Custom tooling can be used for specialized bending operations but will add to the cost. The tooling material is chosen based upon the production quantity, sheet metal material, and degree of bending. Naturally, a stronger tool is required to endure larger quantities, harder sheet metal, and severe bending operations. In order of increasing strength, some common tooling materials include hardwood, low carbon steel, tool steel, and carbide steel.
There are three basic types of bending on a press brake, each is defined by the relationship of the end tool position to the thickness of the material. These three are air bending, bottoming and coining. The configuration of the tools for these three types of bending are nearly identical. A die with a long rail form tool with a radius tip that locates the inside profile of the bend is called a punch. Punches are usually attached to the ram of the machine by clamps and moved to produce the bending force. A die with a long rail form tool that has a concave or V-shaped lengthwise channel that locates the outside profile of the form is called a die. Dies are usually stationary and located onto the material on the bed of the machine. Note that some locations do not differentiate between the two different kinds of dies, punches and dies. Roll forming of sheet metal is a continuous manufacturing process that uses rolls to bend a sheet metal cross-section of a certain geometry. Often several rolls may be employed, in series, to continuously bend stock. Similar to shape rolling, but roll forming does not involve the material redistribution of the work, only bending. Like shape rolling, roll forming usually involves bending of the work in sequential steps. Each roll will form the sheet metal to a certain degree, in preparation for the next roll. The final roll completes the geometry. Channels of different types, gutters, siding and panels for structural purposes are common items manufactured in mass production by roll forming. Rolls are usually fed from a sheet metal coil. The end re-roll is supplied as the coil unwinds during the process. Once formed, Continuous products can be cut to desired lengths to create discrete parts. Closed sections such as squares and rectangles can be continuously bent from sheet metal coil. Frames for doors and windows are manufactured by this method. Sheet metal coil is often rolled bent into the thin walled pipe that is welded together, at its seam. The welding of the continuous product is incorporated into the rolling process.
Press breaking and roll forming are both types of metal bending and forming, but besides the fact that they both fall onto the same basic process type, they have little else in common. Both processes are important, and both have distinct advantages and disadvantages, and their appropriate use depends entirely on the end product being fabricated. In roll forming the metal is shaped by pulling it through pairs of rollers. One roller supports the underside the other acts on the top surface. Each pair is matched and shaped to provide a little more deformation. For example, the bottom roller might have an hourglass profile while the upper roller would be football shaped to push the metal down into the waist of the hourglass. On each pair, the geometry is increased a little more until the last pair produces the final shape required. In a sense, metal roll forming is similar to extrusion. It produces a long length with a uniform cross-section. Using more complex roller shapes, it's possible to put in multiple bends. An industrial metal roll former could have a dozen pairs of rollers and can work on material up to 72 wide and 0.75 thick. Key points to note about metal roll forming are Works on the continuous coil, not sheet. No limit to the length of bend. Bends must all be in the same direction. Profiled lengths are cut to size after forming. Roll forming is sometimes confused with roll bending. Don't make this mistake. Roll bending is using three rollers to put bends into the tube. Process Comparison The press brake is flexible and very versatile. Almost any bend can be put in, in practically any orientation. However, there's a limit to the sheet size and or length of bend. In contrast, metal roll forming works on long lengths of coiled material. And like extrusion, 
the shaped pieces then need cutting to length. This makes it a process for higher volume production while press breaking is more of a low to medium volume process. Press breaking is best for small to medium part volumes, so for fabricators that specialize in very large production runs of a single product, it is usually not a great choice. The exception to this rule is when press breaking is automated via robots, in which case, even very large production runs are possible. Press brakes also cannot make beds for parts longer than a typical bed length. Longer part lengths would generally go through the roll forming or stamping process instead. Finally, metal items that have undergone the press breaking process will not look as immediately finished as parts that have been bent in other ways, such as via roll forming. This means the product may require a secondary finishing process such as painting, powder coating or polishing if it is to be sold as a standalone item, instead of fabricated as a part to be later integrated into a larger product. For getting more information don't forget to subscribe us.